All right. Um, welcome, everyone. We'll call the meeting to order. It is um, 4.15. We'll call the meeting to order. Okay, uh, roll call. Um, Alderperson Feldy. I see her. I see you. We don't hear you. Barb, we can't hear you if you can hear us. Okay, I'll come back to her. Alderperson Heideman? Here. Alderperson Decker? Here. Um, Alderperson Ackley is excused. Um, Alderperson Heideman? Oh, I'm sorry, Alderperson Feldy. Alder Feldy, can you hear us? Alderperson Feldy, can you hear us? She on? Yeah. I'm on, but I'm sound is going in and out. Okay, we can hear you now. <laughs> Real good. Okay. We can hear you loud and clear. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Um, and Alderperson Salazar here. Okay. Um, if you're able, can you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America. America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great. Um, if we can do an introduction of committee members, staff, and guests. Um, um, we'll start down here. Alderman Heidemann, 10th District. Alderperson Dean Decker, uh, 6th District. Uh, Alderperson Salazar, District 3, and Chair of the Committee. Chuck Adams, City Attorney. Um, Alder Feldy, if you could hear us, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Alder Feldy, District 1. Okay. Thank you. All right, great, thank you. Okay, moving on to agenda item number five, approval of minutes for the July 12th of 2023 meeting. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Great, we've got a motion and second. Uh, any discussion? Great, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. I'll wait on that. Any opposed? Great, chair votes aye, motion carries. All right, for agenda item number six, uh, we are presentations of potential applicants for available Class B alcohol beverage license. Um, I believe they each get five minutes, correct? Up to you how many times they get. But okay, well, I think there's only two in the audience, so I don't see you taking up more than an hour. <laughs> um, so who would like to go first? Okay, if you can come to the podium here. And then um, I'll need you to state your full name, correct? Yep, I've been here before. Right. Uh, David Engeldinger, and I'm here on behalf of the historic Sheboygan Masonic Lodge Foundation, Inc. Uh, seeking a club license for the lodge. Uh, we currently occupy the space at 1138 Union Avenue, which is the former VFW uh, facility uh, for anyone who's been there, you know that there is a bar in the basement. Uh, the Masonic Lodge would like to utilize that space uh, primarily for members and guests to support our fundraising activities and uh, occasionally open up to the public. Uh, any questions, committee members? 
I, I do have a question. Um, yes. When you say open to the public, how often do you do you see like five events a year, two events a year? What are you currently doing? Uh, perhaps. I mean, we we do some fundraising activity now. We've had uh, uh, some private dinners. Uh, we have uh, last year we did a golf outing, and you know, having a license to operate the bar certainly would have uh, helped in our fundraising activity. Yeah. Um, so occasionally open to the public. Uh, we are in the process of uh, fixing up the kitchen uh, that is in the building uh, to hopefully have some dinners uh, monthly-ish. Uh, uh, currently our membership meets there twice a month and we use the facility uh, for meals after our meetings. And uh, we'd certainly like to have that as an option to expand our, our fundraising ability. So currently the usage of the space is for members only? Yes. Okay. Yep. And how much is your how many membership? How many um, members do you have? Uh, the Sheboygan Masonic Lodge has roughly about fifty members. Okay. Uh, not all of them uh, active or even living in the area. We have a core group of a uh, dozen, two dozen people that show up regularly and participate. Uh, but if we were able to, you know, I know many of us would like to bring guests into the facility and uh, have the bar available for you know, Packer games, uh, sporting events, what have you. Mm -hmm. um, so it would just be a great option for us to utilize. Okay. Alder Decker? Um, have you applied for like a, a wine and uh, liquor, or a wine, wine and beer license, just the, 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 the uh, lessons uh, restrictive license or the? Um, we have not. Uh, so I'm, I'm exploring okay. this option tonight. Okay. That may be a suggestion just for you to think yeah. about. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it certainly is an option, mm -hmm. uh, but if the full liquor license is available, yeah. you know, why not? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Any further questions? Oh. Great. All right, you're up. I have a talk on a mic, too. <laughs> you, I'm sorry? I don't, that's fine, I can do it. Yeah, if you can say your full name and then. Uh, uh, Scott Wahusky, uh, on behalf of In the Bag, I own the property. Um, the other people left. I want to remodel it change it around, put new bathrooms in, put a different kind of kitchen in, um, and re reclaim the license again. We currently do run uh, Doghouse. I think we do a very good job there. And Frank's place on the south or north side. I uh, want to clean it up over there and make a couple changes, and remodel it, and then reopen it again. Can you state your location again? What location? Can you state where what location you're looking for the license for? Uh, in the Bay. End of Bay? In the Bay. In the Bay. 1501 oh. Union. Okay. And I think we turn around the other two places very good that we do have. I don't mm -hmm. know if you're familiar with the doghouse or Frank's place. They're both very well ran and mm -hmm. got good product and good service and good good people coming in and you know. Yeah. Any questions from the committee? Um, I guess like. Yeah. Um, what kind of time frame are you looking at? Well, if the state plans go through like we planned for the bathrooms, that's going to be the big thing. Yeah. You know, I'm hoping within six months or less, but it, it, it's all going to be on the, the bathroom, you know, because I don't like the bathrooms in there. I don't okay. know if you've ever been in there or not. No. This is, do, is this the old Miller's bar? Is that yeah. The, okay. Okay. That's okay. I mean, on the corner, right? Yeah. 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 I okay. mean, a woman's bathroom is pretty tight. Yeah, I think okay. I think I know what you're. And then, then you got the men's bathroom. You got the sink and a bar, which is sort of old fashioned. Okay. You know, years ago that's all they had it, but you know, today you, you don't have it like that no more. I guess the one quite problem that you would have is, is that it would have to be up within six oh, months. Oh, right. I, I'm getting it uh, state approved by you know for the bathrooms because you got to have that. Uh, okay. Any, oh, yep. Yes. Um, say you don't get the license. Does that mean you're not going to remodel, or are you going to go on and remodel automatically? Well, I'm hoping to get the license back. It's been there for many, many years, and. Uh, like I said, the other two operations, I think we do a very good job at. Okay. You know, and we're open seven days a week until two two o'clock. You know, at night, so we're open seven days a week. Okay. Okay. 
Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, how did you lose, how did the license get lost to begin with? It basically, the previous uh, owner of the license did not renew, and so it expired. Oh, okay. Um, and they did not release the license to the new owner of the building. So that she, yeah. She left okay. them on the bar. She never turned them back in. And technically, she should have taken them here and brought them here instead of leaving them like sort of hidden there. Mm -hmm. They were there. But even that part, she would have had, if she had turned it in without releasing it to you, we would have still been at the same. Yeah, situation. and we had it in a, a, a lease agreement when, when she was there, but. Yeah, she just never took care of it. But she they, didn't they were licensed through. up until the end of the. End of last end year? Of June. End, end of June. June yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is the bar currently open? No. No. Yeah, right. Was it open in June? No. Okay. No, so when, when, the, when the previous owner closed it. it. It had been closed for some time. Um, so there may have been a six-month issue at that time, but knowing the time frame, knowing that they were going to come in, in in July 1st rather than yank the license that way, mm -hmm. um, just had it come available on July 1st and, and hold, these hear you know, hold these hearings afterwards. Any other questions? Um, no, I think that's about it. I guess it's my question is, I, I don't know that it, we got a clear answer. You did say that you hope to have it open within six months. You do understand that if you don't open within six months of being granted, you'll lose the license again. Right. Okay. You know, it depends on, the, hopefully the state will give me the, the print and it'll be okay for what we want to do. Because I don't like the bathrooms at all. I mean, the other places are all nice and neat and clean. I don't know if you go to them or not, yeah. but they're very well-ran places. You can probably ask the police or the fire chief or police department. They'll tell you the same thing. Great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so... Then number seven is next question. All right. Uh, agenda item number seven is discussion and action regarding granting opportunities to apply for the available Class B alcohol beverage license. All right. Um, any discussion? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you wanted to, what was the motion again? There's no motion, just a discussion right now. It's okay, discussion and, and action. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Second. No. Nope. Oh, no. Nope. Okay. Well, I'm gonna. Uh, okay. So just so I get, I'm gonna um, make a motion to grant the, uh, Scott the license. So technically, it would be motion to grant him the opportunity to apply for the license. Apply for the license. Right. That's the gentleman. Right. That's for in the bay. Mm -hmm. For in the bay. I'll, I'll second that. Great. And I, 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 and I will preference every to say once we have a discussion on it. I just, uh, no offense to the Sonic Lodge, right. but I, I, I just think that it's such a limited use um, that we, 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 we want to see a thriving business rather than, and I, and <laughs> I know it's frustrating for you, but it's just, it, it, it's, it's a reality of things. <laughs> Any other discussion? Great, okay. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, chair votes aye. Motion carries. Congratulations. So you'll be able to, to uh, go in and uh, make application technically after the Common Council meeting. Well, actually you could make the application now um, and then you'll have 30 days to get that all done. And so you'll be able to do that anytime in the next 30 days. Thank you to both of you. Thank you. All right, moving on to agenda item number eight, um, RO number 2623 by Chief of Police Christopher Demagowski, pursuant to section 54-65 of the Municipal Code, submitting the quarterly report showing the benchmark measurements of the police department for the period commencing April 1st, 23, and ending June 30th of 23. Chief? Good afternoon. Um, so you have the report, um, the highlights um, 
for it would be part one crime, there was a decrease in part one crime year to date in comparison to the same period in 2022, last year, 403 this year versus 431 last year. This includes a decrease in both crimes against persons, 84 this year versus 98 last year, and crimes against property, 319 this year versus 333 last year. Traffic accidents year to date are up slightly, 702 versus 680 last year. Um, they've been trending down over the last month. Um, and we're still under our target uh, of 1,500, so we're still in a, in a good place. Um, and then there was a decrease in involuntary commitments year to date in comparison, only 51 this year versus 70. I say that with some pause. Um, we've been kept very, very busy or continue to be kept very busy with that. Um, and so we're, have our fingers crossed that the co-responder program will, will start soon. Um, the county signed a, a contract with Elevate and they have positions posted. So the sooner the better as far as that. Then some of the other highlights um, during this period. Um, we had Safety Town, um, which we do with the service club. And so we trained over 95 kids uh, that are around five years old over a two week period in traffic safety and just general safety issues. Um, we finished up our Citizens Academy where we had over 25 citizens that spent 11 weeks with us learning about what we do. Um, we hosted um, two sessions of the Junior Police Academy where we had um, 20 kids two times for a week at a time. Um, really teaching them values-based things and kind of giving them some exposure to the police department. Um, in May and June, we had a number of um, large item disposal um, with some of the neighborhood groups and DPW that we worked on on June 8th. About 20 members of the police department participated in the torch run, raising funds for Special Olympics. Um, and then on June 15th, we partnered with Safe Harbor and the Hmong Community Center to host a talk on domestic violence and sexual assault. So we've been very busy for the period. Any questions? I don't have any questions, but I will applaud you and all the outreach you've done, your team in this past quarter. That's a lot, it's a significant amount, um, but it you know, creates a good sort of dialogue with the community yep. and Safety Town is awesome. My son's been through the program, we love it. Um, any other questions? Good job. Yeah, good job, I guess, is an echo. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I am looking for a motion to accept and file. Motion to accept and file. Second. Great. Any other discussion? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Then I just want to mention too, we have two upcoming events, um, one on Saturday, July 29th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. We have a bicycle rodeo for the kids, uh, teach them about bike safety and bicycle laws and hand out helmets and stuff. That's at St. Peter Claver Church. And then on August 19th, we have our um, community barbecue with Baco and Unity Walk. So that's from about 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Is that one at Fountain Park? Yes. Okay. Great, everyone mark your calendars. Um, any opposed? Great, chair votes aye, motion carries. Okay, um, moving on to agenda item number 10, uh, general ordinance number 132324, and or, nope, I'm sorry, I skipped item number nine. Agenda item number nine, RO number 272324 by Fire Chief pursuant of section 50-564 of the Municipal Code submitting a quarterly report of benchmark measurements for the fire department for the period commencing on April 1st of 2023 and ending June 30th of 2023. I promise I didn't want to hear from you. Yeah. That's, <laughs> thanks, Chair. Can you see me? I'm right here. Yes. Uh, the floor is yours, Chief. So, so real quick, just some highlights. Uh, Everybody has a report, but some highlights. Uh, our call volume continues to rise. We're, uh, we're a little behind of where we were last year, but that's normal. Um, we're, at, we're on track for about 6,300 uh, calls for the end of the year. We have completed uh, a numerous, uh, over half of our inspections. Uh, 
which is we're way ahead of schedule because unfortunately we've had some light duty individuals uh, so they've been helping us do during their light duty uh, workload uh, going out and doing the inspections. So that's had also a positive effect on our shift training and you'll see our numbers are, are we've already surpassed uh, the uh, amount that we were uh, shooting for because of the light duty not having to go do the inspections as a company they were able to do more training. We also implemented a new training software, which is uh, tra uh, tracking those training events more accurately. Uh, something that uh, we are continuing to work on is our uh, fire response, trying to get that percentage to the 90 percentile. So we're up 10% from where we were last year. And also our mutual aid, we're, we're uh, unfortunately, we didn't start tracking it uh, very well until the third quarter of last year. Uh, just because of the software we're using in the RMS system. So now, uh, it, it, even back in that day, we had uh, duplicate efforts and all that, and it wasn't as accurate. So now we are tracking it, and you'll see the mutual aid numbers, both for uh, mutual aid given, which is us helping other communities, and receiving, which is them helping us. So um, uh, we still are on our way uh, into the fall, so uh, we'll be hitting the school system, public education classes and, and training and education, all that. So that'll be coming. Any questions? We'll, we'll be at the community event too, please. <laughs> <laughs> any, any questions? Come look at the fire truck. <laughs> okay. Okay, wonderful, thank right. you. You're welcome, okay. thank you. Thank you. Um, if, the, um, if I'm looking for a motion to accept and file. So moved. Second. Great, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. All right, well, can I, will it carry if she didn't say nay? Yeah, it's still okay. three to zero. Great, um, okay. chair votes aye, motion carries. Did we lose Barb? Okay. All right, moving on to officially item number 10, uh, general ordinance number 132324, an ordinance uh, amending chapter 14 of the City of Sheboygan Municipal Code so as to create article 14-9 relating to the mobile entertainment providers. Uh, Attorney Chuck Adam. So yeah, who, can, take, who takes lead on this? I can answer any questions, but did you want to make, you probably should put it on the floor so you can make your motion to amend after Okay, that. great. I um, would like to amend. You got to you got to first have a motion and a second to approve. And then once that happens, then you can make a motion to amend. Okay. Um, do we have any questions? Yes. Just kind of a little explanation, I guess, of this move might be good for everybody that's listening. Or okay, like go that. ahead. Sure. So uh, this uh, ordinance is um, it was initially um, the result of a conversation with the uh, owners of the Axe Bar, uh, and they wanted to be able to uh, park their axe throwing trailer on the street. Well, they. They can't do that uh, ba currently uh, because the use of any city property, city right of way would be, um, you know, for commercial use would require uh, some kind of permission by the city. Rather than come in and ask you for permission each and every time he wants to park the trailer somewhere, uh, the thought was uh, he wanted to have some kind of a license to do that. Um, so what we did is uh, using the food truck license uh, ordinance as a pattern, uh, we created what's called a mobile entertainment vehicle license, which allows a mobile entertainment provider uh, to park in the right of way following similar rules to those in the, uh, in the food truck uh, uh, ordinance. It is designed to be, you know, obviously it came specifically out of axe throwing, uh, but we didn't want to just have an axe throwing trailer license. Otherwise, every time somebody came up with a new idea, we'd have to come up with a new license for it. Okay. So the idea is any kind of a mobile entertainment um, would, you know, would, would fit under this. And we've tried to define that 
uh, in the ordinance. Uh, you know, we, we tried to come up with, we had we tried to brainstorm what kind of ideas people might come up with that, that would fit this, and then drew up an ordinance that's hopefully broad enough so that most things that people come up with will, will fit under that ordinance. So we thought, you know, somebody has a truck or a trailer that has, you know, a VR game inside of it, you know, mm -hmm. and people come in and play, that, that would work. Or, um, you know, sort of a, you know, dance, dance revolution type thing, or, mm -hmm. um, you know, those Could, kinds of things, okay. video games, video, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, anything that, that's sort of um, like that uh, and, and is contained within sort of a, a trailer or a truck. Uh, there's a couple of differences between this and the food truck license. Uh, the primary difference is the, the food trucks um, actually uh, do require a, uh, a specific vehicle or a, a trailer that's um, in completely enclosed and attached. This doesn't require it to be entirely enclosed, uh, but does then um, put some more restrictions on noise. Uh, we, didn't, we weren't so worried about that with the, the food trucks. Uh, but most, uh, there's also a little bit more availability to use space just immediately adjacent. Like, so the food trucks aren't allowed to put little signs out outside of their truck. They're not allowed to put little tables up, even though you probably see some of them do it on Valrath night. Um, those are technically not allowed. Uh, we, we did figure that there's probably a need for somebody to take money outside, and mm -hmm. so we allowed uh, for that. Um, they're not allowed to serve or sell or distribute food or drink, so this is not a food truck with something else. It, it, is got, it does have to be uh, something uh, separate. So that's what's, uh, that's what's there. I understand there's going to be a motion to reduce the fee. That's uh, certainly up to you. The, the fee was just based on the food truck license uh, fee. That's all. Any other questions? No. Yeah. Um, so, what um, what liability does the city have on something like this? Because if we if we if we allow it, if something if someone does get hurt, is it totally on the the the, uh, the licensee, or is there some liability to the city? They do all? have to get license. They th as part of the license, they have to get show that they've got insurance. They've got to sign a hold harmless that kind of thing. Okay. We're not sort of looking at what is the nature of the entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the reasons for that is we don't want to get into the sort of the uh, business of deciding this is more dangerous, this is less dangerous, mm -hmm. where potentially we could be then held liable for making that decision. Okay. Uh, basically, the idea is here we're allowing people to make money mm -hmm. using the city right-of-way, and so mm -hmm. in order to allow them to do that, uh, we're going to license them and require them to meet certain specific license requirements to do that. Okay. So I think the likelihood of liability is fairly fairly low. Okay, good, good. Oh, yep. I'll turn Thank, you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I guess one of the concerns I have, uh, what about the like the mobile DJ? Uh, he's sitting down, he, uh, he goes down to King Park. Uh, a family says, well, we, we hired this DJ to come in. Um, so he can park on the street and, and play his music is, and I don't see anywhere where there's a decibel level anywhere as far as how noisy they can be within this ordinance. It's section 14.371 sub I. It's fast for you. No music or amplified sound that can be heard outside of the mobile entertainment vehicle is permitted. Run that by me again. No music or amplified sound that can be heard outside the mobile vehicle, mobile entertainment vehicle is permitted. So then that basically would disallow any type of a DJ to do? It, it would disallow any kind of DJ whose music can be heard outside of the vehicle. So yes. So okay. unless he's just playing for people inside the vehicle. Okay, come on yeah. in. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Come on yeah. into my party van. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> any other questions? <laughs> okay. Okay. Looking for a motion. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, now before you do that, now you make your motion. If you okay, like. I would like to make a motion to amend under section 14-37, item G. Um, it states that the cost is 500. I would like to reduce that to 250. 372. So. Three, section 372? Yeah. Sorry, 372. 
I'll second that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, well, I'll, you made a motion? Great. Yep, it's we got fine. a motion second. and a second. Sure. Great. Uh, any discussion? Second. Oh. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Great. Any opposed? Great. Chair votes aye. That motion carries. So now I need to have a motion on the no, amendment motion on the as the ordinance is amended. Okay, can yeah. I get a motion on the no, ordinance no. as amended? You, you, no, you, you already have it. We already have, have the it. motion. It's now been amended, so now it's just a vote. We just have to vote. Oh, okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Great. Any opposed? Great. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Great. Um, agenda item number 11, RO number 282324 by City Clerk submitting various license applications. So staff is recommending approval of the applications on this RO. Uh, there's been a little bit of an update on these things. So as to Blue Harbor, uh, we're recommending uh, that approval is contingent upon approval of the premises description uh, by my office and by approval uh, and and contingent upon approval of the use of the property, if necessary, uh, by the Common Council. It does involve some city property, and that would have to be done separately. The approval for Driftwood is simply contingent on meeting all the requirements of the RDA uh, that the RDA granted in their approval for the use of the property. So we're looking for a motion to approve these with, those with, with the staff okay. contingencies. Yeah. Okay. Great. Motion to approve with staff contingencies. Second. Great. So I have a motion and second. Any discussion? Great. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Okay. Agenda item number 12, RO number 292324, a direct referral by city clerk submitting a license application for the change of premise. And this one, there's been a slight change as well. It's like the, it's somewhat like the one for Blue Harbor. Staff is recommending approval of the application on this RO contingent upon approval of the premises description by the city attorney's office. I will make a motion to approve. Second. With staff contingencies. <laughs> so I have a motion and second. Any discussion? Great. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye, motion carries. All right, uh, next meeting date will be August 16, 2023. Um, looking for a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Great, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, meeting adjourned. Thank you.